When audiences first saw director Takashi Miike's horror thriller audition at festival screenings, many fled in horror and disgust, and some who remained wound up in the hospital. Stanley Kubrick's science fiction masterpiece A Clockwork Orange inspired so many copycat crimes that its director, under pressure from authorities, withdrew the film from release in the entire United Kingdom. Despite the stigma surrounding their respective releases, both of these movies went on to become among the most recognized and respected thriller genre entries of their generations. They inspired music videos, artwork, and even helped birth one of the most recognized contemporary rock bands in the United States. Through the art of rock and roll music videos, album covers, and live performance art, Takashi Miike's audition and Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange solidified themselves in pop iconography, survived bannings and protests, and reshaped the art of rock and roll forever. Let's back up for a second. Integrating pop culture into rock music videos is nothing unique, unusual, or new. Prolific director Stanley Kubrick wrote and directed the 1971 film version of the science fiction thriller A Clockwork Orange, based on the 1962 novel by British writer Anthony Burgess. The film tells the story of a grim future in which the British government attempts to brainwash teenage savage Alex DeLarge, played by actor Malcolm McDowell, as part of an experiment to curb violence in society. Like the novel on which the film is based, much of the script's dialogue occurs in a lingual mixture of English, Russian, Slavic, and made-up words in a fictional slang known as NADSAT talk. Particularly controversial for its stylish and gruesome depictions of rape and murder, the film gained notoriety after a series of violent crimes in the UK bore resemblance to acts in the movie. The first was the attack and rape of a Dutch girl holidaying in Lancashire. The gang of youths who attacked her actually chanted singing in the rain while the attack occurred. By 1973, violent threat letters and advice from British authorities led Kubrick to persuade Warner Brothers Pictures to withdraw the film from release in the UK for the duration of his life. Noted filmmakers commented on the banning controversy in director Gary Leva's 2007 documentary, Great Bolshe Yarblockos. He just felt that he didn't want to bear the burden of responsibility for violent crime. And that's why Stanley pulled the movie two years after it came out and it was never shown in England for probably 25 years. A Clockwork Orange's notable influence on rock music began in 1972, when a London rock group torn under the name A Clockwork Orange, shortly before the film's UK withdrawal. Mick Bolton, the band's keyboardist, would go on to play for popular rock band Mott the Hoople later in the decade. In 1975, during a Madison Square Garden performance, Led Zeppelin drummer John Bonham performed dressed as Alex DeLarge. The 1985 song Uno, Dos, Ultra Violento by Argentinian punk rock band Los Violadores also took inspiration from Kubrick's film, featuring lyrics in NADSAT talk and telling the story of violent youth debauchery inspired by the film. The legendary metal band Motley Crue released their self-titled reunion album in 1994, during the last decade of A Clockwork Orange's exile in the UK. In the music video for the album's song Hooligans Holiday, the band members perform wearing the same white clothes and genital cups worn by Alex DeLarge and his ever-present Droogies.
UK performers continued to integrate the film into their work before its re-release. In November 2001, heavy metal rock star and noted horror filmmaker Rob Zombie performed the song Never Gonna Stop the Red Red Crawley on his album The Sinister Urge. Released after A Clockwork Orange's first UK re-release in 27 years, the song's title is a reference to the NADSAT language and roughly translates to Never Gonna Stop the Flow of Blood. In addition to many NADSAT lyrics in the song, Zombie's music video takes place on a stage designed after the Karova Milk Bar set in Kubrick's film. Intercut with Zombie and a gang of hoodlums driving Alex DeLarge's trademark Durango. The Sinister Urge album went on to reach multi-platinum sales. Since Zombie's performance, hip-hop group Gnarls Barkley modeled an album publicity photo shoot after A Clockwork Orange. Named after the NADSET word for gang member, the metal band Megadeth calls their fans Droogies and designed a fan t-shirt in the film's honor. On wikipedia.org, perceived cultural references to Kubrick's masterpiece encompass an entire page of information separate from that of the film, with particular regards to rock music. Once legally banned to multiple nations, Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange survived in rock and roll music during its exile, and even after its reinception, the film has immortalized itself in pop culture forever through rock music video and album art. Japanese horror filmmaker Takashi Miike released his avant-garde thriller Audition to worldwide audiences in 1999. The film depicts a visual nightmare in which a widower stages a phony film audition where he meets a new girlfriend. His dream date, Asami, turns out to be a murdering psychopath with a penchant for needle torture. When screened at the Rotterdam Film Festival in the Netherlands in 2000, record scores of audience members fled the film during torture scenes, and one patron at the film's Swiss premiere was rushed to the emergency room in a panic attack. Soon after, feminist critics cracked down on Audition for its morally ambiguous storylines alleged portrayal of women as easily fooled interchangeable sexual objects. In 2002, New Jersey rock band My Chemical Romance released their single, Honey This Mirror Isn't Big Enough for the Two of Us. The song's accompanying music video intercuts footage of the band singing, with performers acting out the story of Audition. <laughs> My Chemical Romance went on to become a hit rock band, releasing multiple best-selling albums including the 2004 multi-platinum smash Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge. Today, they remain one of the most recognized names in metal rock, and Audition forever left its mark on the founding history of My Chemical Romance as the inspiration for their first music video. So, where would rock music be without Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange and Takashi Miike's Audition? Without Kubrick's science fiction opus, songs, performances, and artwork by Led Zeppelin, Motley Crue, Rob Zombie, Megadeth, Blur, Gorillaz, and Gnarls Barkley would never have existed. And without one artist's panic-inducing work of Japanese cinema, where is My Chemical Romance's first music video? Also gone. But where would these films be without their role in the history of rock? British audiences legally prohibited from seeing a single frame of A Clockwork Orange for nearly 30 years could experience the film's artwork style and unique storytelling through musical performance. Worldwide metalheads who may have never seen a single frame of Japanese film in their lives have watched a condensed version of Audition over 251,000 616 times on one YouTube copy of Honey This Mirror Isn't Big Enough for the Two of Us alone. So, did cult cinema change the art of rock and roll, or did rock and roll turn millions of unknowing fans onto cult cinema? The answer is both. <laughs>